We are live. Welcome to Thor 4 Review and Thoughts. Love and Thunder in 3D. I am going to start by saying that I thought this movie was pretty good. I didn't completely love it, but I definitely didn't hate it either. And let's see. Yeah, there's going to be a decent amount of jokes in this, but there will also be some serious... Yeah. So over the last three weeks, including this one, I've reviewed Elvis the Black Phone and now this. Elvis was the king of rock and roll. The Black Phone short story is written by the son of Stephen King. And this one features King Valkyrie. Is some person who has sway over the cinema listings a fan of Three Kings and thought this was a fun way to do tribute to it? If so, tip of the hat to you. <clears throat> Brief off topic. Make sure you go to Disney Plus after watching this review to watch the newly released Behind the Scenes of Doctor Strange 2, presented by National Treasure, Bruce Campbell. It was just my birthday, and as usual, the MCU delivers a present. So, I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And, yeah, so, the, there will be, I'm not spoiling this movie, it's in the review itself. I am spoiling the MCU leading up to the movie, including very recent stuff, but yeah, once I get to the thought sections, then I start spoiling this movie. <clears throat> now, the movie is rated PG-13, somehow, and so is this video. And... Let's see... That brings us to the plot. Let's see. So, yeah. <clears throat> Thor. Let's see. I don't know how much of this I want to give away. I'm just going to say Thor has to stop Gore the God Butcher. And one of the taglines for this is not every god has a plan. There aren't enough Baldricks to go around. Besides, people are always telling him to salt off. So, the... Yeah, briefly, I want to say the technical aspects, a lot of talent and skill and enthusiasm. Now, a lot of current action blockbusters, things are planned out ahead extremely long time before, you know, they start making the movie, certain things are going to be in the script regardless. And there are definitely times where you can tell in this movie, oh, they kind of, they... You know, they have X amount of locations, X amount of new creatures or abilities. The 3D is quite good. There is depth. I'm not sure this movie ever really throws anything at you the way that Doctor Strange 2 did. But, yeah. There's depth. At times, there's like this feeling of some parts of the image being closer to us than others. And that brings us to the writing. So Taika Waititi helped write this as he has written several of his other movies. And the other credited writer is Jennifer Caton Robinson. <clears throat> I have to admit, I don't know. You know, other than this, she worked on Hawkeye. That's the only thing I know her from. I guess I could just very briefly go, really the only non-MCU Taika Waititi thing that I've seen now is Jojo Rabbit, which I think is amazing. I would like to watch 
some of his other stuff, but very little of it is on Disney+. Plus. There are <clears throat> some of the seasons of what we do in the shadows, but not the movie. Anyway, yeah, one I've seen one critic point out that this movie is as weird and out there as the comics are, and that's very true. I think there's some good writing here, but the the there are the movie is yeah, I guess that yeah I'll I'll get into in just uh, yeah I think there is some really good writing. There are some interesting character aspects in the writing. And, yeah, you know, interesting ideas brought up. Now, the movie does pretty well with plot twists. Not too many, not too few, not too easy to figure out. Yeah, so, the direction, handled entirely by Taika Waititi, and, yeah, Jojo Rabbit is an 8 out of 10, and Thor Rangrock is an 8 out of 10. And I'll share my rating for this movie at the end of the review. So, you know, feel free to skip ahead to the first thought section and, you know, go back a little. He's apparently also directing the Akira live-action adaptation. I have faith in very few people. Being able to do that movie justice. It is probably my favorite anime and manga. I think there's a chance that Taika could do it. I think he it makes sense as a, as a choice. So, yeah, in an interview, Waititi said that it's like we asked a four year old what sh we should put in the movie and agreed to all of them. And some of the time that's invigorating some of the time it's like wow that was you know that's actually in there but other times it's very tiring at one point a character goes you're really dragging this out aren't you and that was how i felt about most jokes in the whole movie <clears throat> this was apparently cut down from four hours and it really shows there is a lot I love about this movie, and the, what's the word? I think probably the biggest problem with the movie is that every, nearly every scene, I would, I would probably say any scene that doesn't feature gore, it feels like everyone on screen especially like the big name actors and such all of them think that the movie that the you know the biggest punchline should come from them so they're just constantly I, I guess it's not really that the movie stops and they're just riffing as much as we you know they they riffed while filming and then we got what they thought was funniest. But it just, it... I wish, I wish that they had trimmed out, like, a quarter of the jokes and given all of that time to actually delving into the serious topics that it brings up. Because there are some incredibly weighty issues here. And the movie just... It's in way too much of a rush to, to really sit down. And it's not like the movie didn't have to raise them at all. A lot of movies don't. But the, the you know, it does. And it just, it feels cheapened that it doesn't go into it. <clears throat> hmm. 
Now, the opening is very effective. I, uh, I almost don't want to give it away. I'm just going to say that there's some incredible acting, and yeah, it's it's very effective. So I am not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but it fits with what came before. I think there's some really great things about the ending. I guess if I had to say, like, overall the ending is either good or bad, yeah, the I, I think the ending is good. I know a lot of people really did not like it. And I can understand why. As usual, there is, you know, there's a mid credit scene and a post credit scene, so stay all the way through the end credits. I have not read the comics that this is based on, but I have seen, like, videos of people, you know, here on YouTube explaining those comics. <clears throat> they took... A lot of the things that were in the comics, you know, some of the stuff got like remixed and and you know worked around so it fit in the MCU. I think they did a really great job on most of it. There are a couple of things that frustrate, but a lot of the the most important stuff they they got very right. I am much happier with this as an adaptation than Ragnarok as an adaptation of Planet Hulk, which is an excellent comic. Now, let's see. yeah, that brings us to the characters. So, see. yeah, uh, you know, I'm not the first person to say for a lot of the cast members, this is the best performance they've given as their character in the MCU so far. And, yeah, you know, Chris Hemsworth, like, it is legitimately impressive. He has, he has been doing this for 11 years by now. Is it 12? I guess it's 12. Did his movie come out in 2010? Or am I thinking of, I believe, the the first, anyway, yeah, 11 or 12 years, he's still this, you know, massive muscle, you know, so, yeah. He's still funny, he's still charming, charismatic. You know, I, I feel like the... Some of the time in this movie, his character really is what, like, exactly what it should be, what it, you know, at its best. He tries to give people hope. He tries to soothe their fears and answer their prayers. Now, so let's see. Yeah. Tessa Thompson returns as King Valkyrie, the king of New Asgard. And let's see. So Thompson and producer Kevin Feige said the character's bisexuality would be addressed with this appearance, retroactively making her Marvel Studios' first LGBTQ superhero. You know, I think there was something in there about her bisexuality, but I honestly... Don't, there's there's so much in this movie I can't, I can't remember all of it but yeah I, I think it was in there in an interview Tessa Thompson talks about that her character is apparently into musicals she says among her favorites are Phantom and Cats I can 100% see like honestly Valkyrie probably spent days weeks campaigning for the release of the butthole cut now some critics have pointed out there is too little Valkyrie Absolutely. I, it's, it's legitimately, she has shown up in three movies in the MCU so far, and not a single one of them gives us enough of her character. And I, I, I could kind of understand it in Ragnarok, 
because she spends a chunk of that not really wanting to be close to Thor, and it's told mostly from his perspective. So certainly more ah. Yeah, usually when yeah, usually when there's a scene with her, if Thor isn't close by, she's like watching him fight or something, you know. So yeah, the the I really hope that you know, she'll eventually get more. And Natalie Portman returns as Jane Foster astrophysicist Thor's ex-girlfriend and yeah she did not appear in Thor Ragnarok but she agreed to return after a meeting with director Taika Waititi which he offered uh, I guess I'm not gonna yeah just he he managed to convince her <clears throat> so I am gonna briefly rate worst to best keeping in mind I love all of her performances that I've seen where the heart is MCU before this black swan the other Belain girl and V for vendetta I yeah I think I would rank her performance in this I guess right ju just ahead of her V for vendetta performance now, in interview, both of the actors said they like going back, showing what the relationship between Thor and Jane was. We see what they're like together. We see the breakup. And Chris Hemsworth calls it some of the funniest stuff in the film. I don't know if I found it all that funny, but I did think it was... I, I loved it. I thought it, like, it really added more texture to the... I've, I've you know... I was going to say I've been shipping them, but I guess that's not not when the movie does it already. I've been a fan. Of, I've been standing the relationship from the first movie, the moment that they laid eyes on each other. I was like, they're great together. I, I thought it was very, like... There's a thing called disheartening. Is there a thing just called heartening? Because that, that's what it was. It was very heartening to see them together. You might not know it if you've only seen her in the MCU, but Natalie Portman could be tremendously adorable on purpose. There wasn't a lot of room for that in the first two Thor movies, since she was supposed to be this workaholic scientist. Basically, the only thing where that really comes through is, you know, like her social... In the first one, she doesn't have, like, her... You know, her yeah, let's see. I think some of her plates aren't cleaned up and in the right spot. And then, you know, in the second one, the date is a bit of an awkward disaster. But, <clears throat> yeah, now she really gets to be adorable. And Tessa and Nat were very happy to work together again after Annihilation. And they do have great chemistry in this. And let's see. Yeah, I, I have not watched Annihilation yet. I I want to watch the movies that Alec Garland directs, because if he's half as good of a director as he is a writer, he's amazing. So, yeah. Now, depending on which... Yeah. Depending on which critic you listen to, the chemistry between Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth is either amazing or terrible. And some people say that both of them love being in this movie. Some of them say that Chris loves it and Natalie Portman hates it. I thought they had amazing chemistry and I, th I felt like they both really loved doing what they're doing. <clears throat> Christian Bale plays Gore the God Butcher, a scarred galactic killer who, let's see, yeah, he, he wants to kill gods. And yeah, I'm just very briefly gonna, so worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of his performances, 
of movies that I've seen. Public Enemies, Terminator Salvation, Reign of Fire, The Dark Knight Trilogy, The Prestige, Harsh Times, The Machinist, Equilibrium, American Psycho, and this. So, yeah, this is, I, I didn't, I was, I was cautiously optimistic, but I was like, there's no way, there's no way he's going to top American Psycho. Yeah, like, I, I've spent over 20 years convinced that he was never going to top American Psycho, but he, he did. And once again, I haven't watched all of his movies, so it is possible that there's another movie where I would say that performance also topped American Psycho. Now, yeah, Chris Hemsworth said they all found Christian Bale terrifying. I can see why. He is the stuff of nightmares. He crawls out of the darkness and terrifies you. It is, yeah, you know, I, I, I am 100% sure what my, uh, you know, that's, that's nightmare fuel for a month. And let's see. And, right, sleep paralysis. Now I know what my new sleep paralysis demon, is that what it's called? Looks like. And, you know, Tessa Thompson says he manages to still fit in their colorful world. I agree. I do feel a little bad for Gore because Hella kind of beat him to the punch for a lot of the Asgardian gods. There are not words in any recorded language to express how happy I am to see Christian Bale back in a villain role. I will admit, I haven't watched everything he's done, but looking over the filmography, I'm not sure he's actually played a villain. You know, like, he played a villain in, he, or antagonist, at least, in Shaft, and he's the, the villain in, in Psycho, although, American Psycho, although he's also the the protagonist, but that's, you know, it's an, yeah, love that movie. American Psycho is one of, yeah, I already mentioned one of my favorite performances of his. He's so intense, dangerous. I hope this movie marks the first of many villain roles for the actor. I like him playing heroes. I think his Batman's great, but I love him playing villains. And yeah, like at, at times in this movie, he is as intense as, as his Patrick Bateman. And it's just like... I don't, I don't, I don't want him near me. I don't want him to touch me. I really appreciate it if he just turned around, walked away, disappeared forever. He's, he's terrifying and I love it. This is, yeah. I've seen some say he's almost as good of a villain as Thanos. I'm not sure I would go quite that far, but he definitely is both... Like, you, you sympathize with him at times, but you also really hate him and want to see him defeated. It's, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I would go quite as far as, as to Thanos. And certainly Thanos was a more kind of... I felt like uh, Gore, there was a little bit too much of, like... Um, it didn't feel like everyone agreed 100% on what, like, on who Gore is and what he wants and such. There are, there are a couple of different, yeah, different time, different points of the movie where it seems to be something different from the other times. And, yeah. So, you know, definitely not as consistent. Uh, although, I suppose he his shifts are fairly in line with how Thanos shifts between Infinity War and then Endgame. Not the one that gets his head chopped off, but the other, the one at the end of the movie. Yeah. And, <clears throat> yeah. Other critics have already pointed out he's in too little of a movie. He, and, and too much of what he does happens off screen. Some have said he's underdeveloped. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. 
and he really stands out because the rest of the movie is silly and the I agree but I don't think it was a bad thing it was it was kind of like when he showed up the movie got to be serious and you know better than the constant jokes than that it otherwise was so yeah and I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about you know yeah the Guardians of the Galaxy do appear in this movie don't you know they're not in a huge amount of it I don't worry I, I knew before going in I wasn't like hugely disappointed or something and Jamie Alexander returns as Sif. I was hoping she would finally get a chance to shine in the MCU. Still didn't quite get there. I, you know, I think the casting is great. I, I, yeah. Anyway, that brings. Yeah, and you know, Waititi reprises his role as Korg. Korg rocks. Thor may be bold, but Korg is bolder. No matter the task, Korg has the stones for it. Now, some critics, you know, critics are somewhat mixed on the narration that Korg provides. Based on how much some people hated it, I thought it was going to be a way bigger part of the movie. It really isn't in that much of the movie. There's, it, you know, yeah, there are a couple of parts where he narrates. I thought it worked fine. I thought I was going to get really sick of him because that is the thing, like, love him or hate him, he's not that much in Ragnarok. And same for, for Endgame, but here, he's in a lot of the movies. So, yeah, you know, I was not crazy about that. I think, I, just, I think it's a character that works best in relatively small doses but you know I thought it, I thought it was gonna be way more annoying than he turned out to be it it really wasn't too bad and I guess I will just briefly say Russell Crowe appears in this and I don't know exactly how to feel about I, I I'm a little I'm a little mixed I think there are some really great things but also some things that are kind of awkward about the character yeah now let's see yeah that brings us Right. I saw on Twitter someone said, Dear Bisexuals, you will not make it all the way through Thor Ragnarok. I think the same can be said of this one. So yeah, I've seen some critics say that there are great character arcs for everyone. Yeah, that I agree. And it's, you know, the MCU's first romantic comedy. And yeah, you know, the, some people don't think that there should be any romantic comedies in the MCU. I thought a lot of it worked. And that brings us to the cinematographer Barry Baz Idwan, who, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, Incredibly talented. And let's see. So the Yeah, there's there's some really great like the what he does with color and high contrast filming in in some parts and just yeah, there's there's some really incredible cinematography. There are also instances of the, you know, MCU average. Yeah, cinematography, 
and that is still unfortunate. Now, this was edited by Mary Ann Brandon, who has also edited Star Wars movies, Star Trek, Mission Impossible 3, yeah. She does a great job. I, I do have some issues with the editing, but I think they I think they tried to do the best they could, given that they had over four hours of material, or, or about four hours of movie that, that you know. So, yeah, there's there's definitely some editing where, like, yeah, but yeah, I I I've said that all. I have said all that I have to say about it. The effects are, you know, there's still some, ah, what's the word? There are still some of the, ah, what's it called? There's still some of the C some CG that isn't entirely convincing, but they do make good. You know, this uses the volume. You know, which is also used for some of the Disney Plus Star Wars shows, and yeah, you know, they they do a really great job. I I'm not sure I would say any part of this felt like just actors in front of green screens, which is. One of the, you know, one of the things we that the volume offers is that, yeah, it just, it gives the actor something to act off of, and it just, it feels more natural, even though it is still a set, it's still digital. So this was apparently made for $185 million, and I think it's doing fairly well. And, uh, yeah, the box office. Now, the action definitely, I saw some, I, I saw critics say that the action, none of the scenes were all that creative or felt distinct enough for their taste and, and stuff like that. And, yeah, I, I could see what they mean. I, I think that there were some really cool elements in some of the action scenes. I don't know that I really thought that it completely... I think there were, there were too many jokes for a lot of the action to feel exciting. It just felt... You know, you, you didn't really feel that much of a sense of tension, but then, you know, when, when gore takes part, then it gets tense. So, it's not all... yeah. And, yeah, the movie has actual horror movie scenes in it, so that's... Very, yeah. Some have said that the movie feels like it's basically a parody of a Thor movie, and... Yeah, I. It didn't bother me as much as it bothered others, and I I do understand why it bothered them as much as it did. Now, yeah, so the score was handled by Michael G. Aquino, and yeah, you know he's he's done. Other of these, you know, he also did Spider-Man No Way Home. He does a great job. And they also, you know, I agree with the people who say that they're, the movie has too many needle drops, but I don't think any of them are less than amazing. There's some really great sound design. Some of the things that only exists inside the MCU, you know, and, and are only introduced in this movie, they managed to give them sound, you know, yeah, create a sound design for them that sounds 
like you look at the thing move and you hear the noise and you're like okay yeah I guess it's alive I guess it exists in in the real world so this movie is one hour and fifty minutes if you don't count the end credits and two hours and two minutes if you do count them and once again make sure you stay through all the way through them now the yeah I would say the best element of the movie is the character stuff I think the worst aspect is that it's just so unwilling and terrified of slowing down even briefly to let serious stuff land you know like after after a while you start feeling like why are you even bringing all this stuff up if you're not gonna let any of it land you know there are action movies that don't bring up deep stuff that just make you feel feelings you know <coughs> excuse me now uh, yeah going off other reviews the the stuff people hated the most was tonal issues and pacing I was most looking forward to more Tessa Thompson and Natalie Portman and I, I was quite happy with the Natalie Portman I did not think there was enough Tessa Thompson I was most worried about the humor undercutting emotional moments like Korg when the foundation of Asgard was destroyed honestly I don't know that I really felt like it did that all that much it just didn't allow time for the stuff to to really land I was also surprised by how many times some of the heavy material actually got brought up since it seemed like it wasn't gonna let any of it land and often didn't let any of it land the trailers do give too much away you know if you've already watched them just try not to think too much about what you haven't already seen appear in the movie that you saw in the trailer and some of the cover poster art also gives away too much and right so on Rotten Tomatoes <clears throat> it has a 68% rating based on 390 reviews which is fresh and an 81% audience score based on over 5,000 verified ratings and see, yeah on Metacritic the the average is 57 out of 100 based on 60 critic reviews and 5.8 based on 198 ratings and 56 user reviews and on IMDB it What does that say? An average rate of 7 based on 48,772 MDB users. Now 22.5% gave it 7, 20 9, 17.6, 10, 9.49. 9. But 5.9 give, did give it 5, and 5.5 gave it 1. So and yeah so I um, once there was 100 that uh, yeah once there were 100 user reviews I went over the yeah how many you know what people voted and there you know 27 people gave it 1 out of 10 16 2 out of 10 3 out of 10, 4, 4 out of 10, 8, 5 out of 10, 7, 6 out of 10, 10, 7 out of 10, 17, 8 out of 10, 12, 
9 out of 10 won, 10 out of 10 two. So, a lot of people really did not like this movie. So, this pushes the PG-13, but I, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with showing this to a 13-year-old. And that brings us... Right, that brings us to the rating. I think ultimately I do come down with a rating of seven gods slain out of ten. And that brings us to yeah so the i guess yeah all of the mcu movies keeping in mind i love all of them ranked worst to best Iron Man 2, Thor 2, Black Widow, Captain America 1, Thor 1, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant-Man, Ant-Man 2, Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, Iron Man 3, Iron Man, Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, Thor 4, Far From Home, No Way Home, Guardians 1, Guardians 2, Black Panther, Winter Soldier, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. And I forget where I put Doctor Strange too, but it, I, I remember that as being fairly high as well. That brings us to the thoughts sections. So, the rest of this video contains spoilers for this movie and the MCU, but nothing else. The rest of this video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it is analysis, some is MSTK, riff tracks, and other jokes, especially in the next thought section. And yeah, so the very next th thought section is thoughts I had while watching, chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. And the section after that is thoughts I had before watching. So, the right. I'm going to write it here. So, and we are back. So, the, there we go. Back to the notes. So, yeah, I thought it was very compelling seeing, you know, we open on Gore with his daughter. I'm afraid I don't remember her love her his daughter love and the the yeah I, I know technically it's only the the i forget was it eternity the eternity wish daughter is love but i'm gonna go with it yeah so you know he loses his daughter he he has to watch her die in this barren wasteland and then he finds an oasis just too late, just a little too late, and his his god mocks him and and says, you know, it doesn't matter if all of you die, there will always be more believers. And the Necro Sword corrupts Gore and the the So the the Necro Sword corrupts Gore, and I what was the yeah I was a little surprised by how much there is in this movie of like magical artifacts calling out to people 
you know, the Necrosort with Gore and Mjolnir with Mighty Thor, Dr. Jane Foster, who then becomes Mighty Thor. I don't know, maybe I'm an easy mark, but I thought Baby Thor with with Baby Mjolnir was funny. You know, he's like, in, in case you don't recall, I guess it's young Frigga is charging into battle and, and Thor is like on, on, you know, one of those things you can carry the baby, carry your baby on the front of, you know, fr front facing away from, them. and he look, he's having a great time going into battle like this. And Korg recaps the other movies for people who haven't watched them in a while. We get some Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. I like the Welcome to the Jungle needle drop. I thought it worked quite well. And I gotta say, when Thor destroyed their holy site, it really reminded me of Team America. So, you know, that's good. And I, I kind of, you know, I, I appreciate that, like, it didn't just immediately get dropped or something. Like, he legit, like, you know, he... He says he's gonna save it or stop it or whatever, and then you know, he flies directly into it, and and you know the the I think King Vanak or something like that is like he's not he's not flying into it, is he? And then you know ah oh, he said ah oh, and it all crashes behind you know and and Thor is like so listen about your holy site. No, I I don't want to talk about it. It's, thinking about it makes me angry. And, and you wonder if, like, the goats, if that's not so much reward as punishment. They were just, they were hoping to get rid of these goats. I gotta say, the goat screaming, based on how much some people hated it, I thought there would be way more. I, I agree, it's way too much. And it's, it's maybe funny the first time, it definitely stopped being funny after that point. I thought there was gonna be at least twice as much of it as there was. I don't know, am I just good at tuning out stuff that bothers me in movies sometimes. I kind of like that Natalie Portman pointed out, you know, Interstellar got the the visual metaphor for the Einstein-Rosen Einstein-Rosen bridge from Event Horizon, and she even says, watch both of those movies, which that's not what I would personally say, but you do you. If you love Event Horizon, that's great. I really, I, I wasn't sure we were going to see Darcy Lewis. I'm really glad we did. And as usual, you know, she tries to be supportive of Jane, but she's also the reality check, you know. The, the, yeah, in, in all three of these movies, she is the one who points out, you know, like, yeah, just breaks it down. Listen, think about this. Think all the way, you know, don't... Yeah, you know, she knows her, and she knows... You know, I, I really appreciate... Yeah. And Selvig appears via a screen and find out that there's no progress with the chemo. And... Let's see the... Yeah, and, and Mjolnir calls to her, and she, pay, you know, gets, and, and we see New Asgard has become a tourist destination, and Daryl's a tour guide, that's, that's great, as, yeah, and I like how, you know, he, he says, oh, and here we have the, you know, the pieces of Mjolnir, because if you recall, he had a little trouble you know, there, there was, let's see, one of the jokes in Team Thor was that Daryl was trying to, I want to say, like, vacuum the floor. 
and Thor had left Mjolnir right in the middle of, of the floor. You know, so, yeah, was, I guess that part of the floor is just not going to get vacuumed. Just, uh, yeah. And they go over a bunch of distress signals, which leads Thor to Gore. And the shadow creatures and Gore attacking Asgard. And, I mean... Mighty Thor is super effective. She is like, it's it's incredible how good she is at using Mjolnir. And let's see. yeah, so we get the flashbacks of the two of them together. And yeah, I just I thought it I I thought they were great together. Like like I said in the review, I didn't. I don't know that I found it all that funny, but I yeah, they're they're sweet together. And there were some great moments in there. And let's see. I don't know if it was necessary for Thor and Gore to fight each other quite as many times as they did, but I did enjoy the fights. And I, I like that. You know, Gore's first plan was to try to get to. Well, actually, wait. I guess he was always going after the kids of New Asgard, wasn't he? Since maybe he figured that if he attacked New Asgard, maybe Thor Odinson would show up. Maybe that was what the. A anyway, he he goes to kidnap the children when you know rather than try to fight two Thors and a Valkyrie, you know, so, yeah, and I, it was really, really creepy how he, you know, like, it reminded me of, like, mo the, the monster under the bed or something, you know, when he just comes out of the dark and grabs these kids and just, yeah, and let's see, Yeah, and, and, you know, Odinson and Jane bicker about the breakup, about whose fault it was, and this whole thing, and he's, yeah, I, I don't know, I thought it was fine, I get why some people hated it, and Axel transitioned from Astrid, and refuses to answer to Astrid, and eventually wears down Thor, to where Thor agrees to me to, to refer to him as Axel because that is his name now. Stop using the dead name. Yeah, I I I don't think I had any problem with any part of the LGBTQ plus representation in this. I mean, I I'm I'm an ally. I'm not actually you know, I am, I'm cishet, so it doesn't, I can't, you know, I'll, I'll let others, you know, I'll let members of the community actually talk about if they thought it was good or bad. I could understand if maybe the bit with, like, Korg and Dwayne, if that was a bit too, like, I don't know, stereotypical, I, I personally really thought, I, I really like this, you know, Thor even mentions, I mean, I, your father named you this, and I'm, you know, it's, it's this thing, because that's something that sometimes comes up for trans individuals, you know, someone will say, but you used to be, you know, you, this used to be your name, this used to be your gender, I, I can't, I, I don't understand why this is suddenly different, and Axel doesn't say, uh, you know what, I, uh, I'm being selfish, I'm wrong, you're right, I should just go back to this identity that I hated, that I didn't ask for, you know, no, he's, he doesn't say the word dead name, but, like, he, he keeps saying, no, my name is Axel now, I'm Axel now, I'm not Astrid, I'm Axel, you know, he, he essentially, he communicates, stop dead naming me, you know, and, 
I could see Thor as being someone who at first would be stubborn about it and eventually would realize, okay, yeah, it's, this, you know, this is what you want and I, I care about you so I care about what you want. And I liked Omnipotent City fine. I, uh, it just bothered me that it's, I mean, I guess it's there because they wanted to set up, you know, Zeus and, and Hercules and all, but like all that actually, all they get out of going to Omnipotent City is leaving with the lightning bolt. You didn't have to, I, I think it's maybe 20 or 30 minutes of screen time and they accomplish nothing else. It's just arguing and then some fighting, and then they leave, and nothing, like, if all that needed to happen was for them to get this lightning bolt, just have them steal it, and then have, you know, Zeus realize it must be, you know, no one but Thor would even be able to, to steal it from me, Hercules, go deal with him, something like that, instead of this, like, because it brings up the cancer multiple occasions, but seems very reluctant to just let that sit, let it land. And I thought it was very compelling when, like, I, th I think it could have been absolute. I, th I think it could have been a 10 out of 10 on how, like, how strong the, the, ah, what's the word? exploration of for you know the cancer I, I thought that could have been a 10 out of 10 instead it's maybe six or seven out of 10 and that's because they're constantly trying to make us laugh instead of just actually you know because it's not the mcu can't actually do this remember the start of guardians of the galaxy one or the ending of guardians of the galaxy one where i f i forget if it was cancer but it was definitely some death Yes, it was cancer, I remember, because it broke Ego's heart to put that tumor in her head. You know, that they, they bring it up, and they actually let it, like, it's, yeah, you know, it's, if, yeah, if you have Disney+, Plus and you don't quite remember, just go, go to Disney+, Plus, watch the first several minutes of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I think an argument could be made that... It's a it's a joke moment when he gets like abducted by the spaceship, but before that, I think there's maybe three minutes of just like heart wrenching, just yeah, it just like the the movie just completely rips your heart out, and and it's just you know it makes us feel things, and that's why we're watching movies. You know, if I just wanted to say, oh, that's cool. You know, why go for fiction? Why not just so, you know, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I can find a weird video on Twitter or something. You know, the MCU can make us feel things, you know, when, when they're just, when they're not so afraid that it, you know, I, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's the bottom line, you know, if, if they think it'll cost them money. If they think they'll lose money, like, you know, oh, people won't go back to the, watching the movie if they think it'll make them sad. People watched Guardians of the Galaxy quite a lot. It, it did very well, you know, so, j yeah, I, I wish, now that Disney Plus is a thing, I hope that they maybe put the four-hour version of this movie on Disney Plus, you know, and, and just... I would watch it, and I'm pretty sure there are a number of other people who would as well. And yeah, it just the the ah, what's the word? Uh, what was the thing?
Anyway, um, I, I really appreciate that Jane still applies, you know, what she knows about science. You know, it's not, she's not like some meathead now that she's big and muscly and, and tall. She's, you know, she's like the, the let's see. Yeah, Thor is like, I, I don't know what the deal is with Stormbreaker right now, but, you know, she's acting up. So, you know, and Jane is the one who says, well, if we have a boat, we could use Stormbreaker as a motor. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's such a great, yeah. And, yeah, we find out that Jane's mom died when Jane was a kid, and it... I don't think they spell it out, but it's very heavily implied that it is, you know, there there is a there is a hereditary ah uh, crap, what's the word? There's cancer has a hereditary element or uh, something like that, which means that if your parents or grandparents had it, you are more likely to get it than if they didn't and you know that is one of the <sighs> that's one of the things that's so hard about it and i really wish the movie spent some more time on it because it does like it is it is clearly actually it it wants to <sighs> The movie, the movie just does want us to realize these things. Like, think about how easy it would have been to just remove the reveal that her mother had cancer. Because it, if they don't spend very long on it at all. It would have been extremely easy to remove. So it's in there for a reason, and it would just it would work so much better if they did, you know spend more time on it you know the the if you if if there is cancer in your family that means that you have to accept that there is some chance that you yourself will get cancer and you know the the i know of people who had so much trouble talking about it that it ended up getting much worse before they saw a doctor and where it's like there's some chance that it could have been removed before if they had seen a doctor sooner but they didn't want you know it it's it's uncomfortable to think about we don't like to think about our own mortality and I just I, I really wish the movie spent a little more time on it especially because it really seems like that's something that was important to Natalie Portman and I really appreciate that Valkyrie and Jane support each other you know like Jane comes up to the door Valkyrie's like are you okay and she's like I'm okay the sink begs to differ, you know, and she's like, okay, fine, I'm not 100%, you know, please don't tell Thor about it, it's between us, you know, that's just, yeah, great. And Gore scares kids, like, he, he comes in out of the darkness, out of the shadows, and it's terrifying. And one of the um one of the Asgardian kids reminds Gore of his own kid and it's this thing of you know it's it's like he it's it's that thing of like if his own kid was still alive and he's you know then seeing this other kid remind him of his ah that's you no know, I can't wait to see her again. But now that she's dead, it's like 
you know, pouring salt in the wound. And we, yeah, so, so they arrive at the omnipotent, omnipotent city, and Korg's god sits on a scissor throne. The rock has beaten the scissors into submission and made them his throne. That's, yeah. And, and that little adorable god, god of the dumplings or something, yeah, that's... And Zeus shows up, talking orgies a lot. I kind of love... I have to admit, th this might have been... It, it's probably my favorite joke, yeah. When Zeus catches... Thor, Odin's son you know, t talking while he's tr he's trying to talk to the masses, he's like, do you have something you'd like to share with the class, with the rest of us, something like that, you know, share with the rest of us, and it's like, so he's a passive-aggressive, put-upon high school teacher now? There's, yeah, yeah, as, as just... I just, I just love that, like, he gets up in the morning, he's, like, throwing lightning bolts, he's planning orgies, and then when someone, like, just keeps yammering, he's, like, he, he turns into, like, the, the teacher, like, excuse me, are we wasting your time? Is there somewhere you'd like, you'd prefer to be right now? You know, just, I, 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 lo I love it. It's, it's so good. And, yeah, Thor asks for an army and does not get it. And, yeah, they talk about Eternity. And I've seen at least one critic say, why didn't they ask Eternity to bring 50% of everyone back? Yeah. And and it's the kind of thing where, like, there might they might have thought of an explanation, but, you know, there's already so much going on in the movie. But it's a it's a valid complaint. And let's see. Right, and the yeah, the ship is the A gear. And Korg and or Korg's head and Valkyrie talk about love. Thor finds out about the cancer. Jane and Thor kiss. And Valkyrie at one point said, we're here to wait. I, I couldn't help but, like, imagine she wanted to go on and say, I'm Q-word. And turns out that Gore set a trap for them. Gore got kind of anti-natalist at, at point. You know, he's, he's talking about, oh, you know, if she was... Maybe it was good that she died so young, so she wouldn't see all this misery, something like that. And Gore goes for Stormbreaker. And, yeah, Thor talks with Jane about cancer and love. And Thor is alone for the climax. Gore gets to eternity and... Or is it headed for Zarji? And Thor shares light, his lightning powers with the Asgardian kids. Now, I saw at least one critic, I, I think it might have been Sean Chandler, talks about saying that there was some. I, I haven't watched his spoiler review yet, but in the non spoiler one, he said near the end, Thor did something, and I was like, why didn't he do that in the other ones? And yeah, like the. Uh, what's the word? If he had, uh, let me think, I got a, um, yeah, wh why didn't he do that in Infinity War and Endgame and in general in all of these? If I had to guess, I mean, maybe there's like a thing of only like, they're not all as guardians. a couple of them point that out, but they're all I, as far as I can tell, none of them are just, you know, regular humans. Maybe you have to be an alien 
in order to you know take the the this power so he couldn't do it with civilians I mean, basically, yeah, I guess maybe maybe he could do it on Hulk, but, I mean, at the, you know, at the end of the day, Hulk is a, like, that that's a change from a human's body. It still started out as a, a human body. I think that is probably the explanation if, you know, you asked one of the people working on it, but I, I don't know. I I thought it was a, a great look, and and that is ver very much where it feels like you know, okay, you are you are supposed to show this movie to children. You know, that is something like if I was still a kid, I would have loved the ending. As, as it was, I still I I got a what's the word a a. Yeah, I, I loved it on their behalf. And, you know, I, the, it is a good detail that, you know, Jane fights even though she knows it, you know, it, it will kill her. And that's also, you know, that's something that is a, is a, you know, cancer. Some people live with cancer and live with the live with the realization that they're going to die soon for so long that they end up making decisions about what they want to be the last thing that you know how how do they want the last little while to do and and some people choose to stop taking to to you know yeah stop getting treatments and I wish the movie would just let it land instead of being in such a hurry, but it was still great to see. And I really love that, you know, I, I you know, yeah, she comes, Natalie Portman's character comes at Gore and she's like, it's not Lady Thor, it's Mighty Thor. And if you can't say that, I will accept Dr. Jane Foster, and I absolutely love that, and that is, I, I don't understand why people insist, oh, no, it has to, it has to be Lady Thor, or She Thor, or something, why, why, why couldn't it just be, like, it, it's, it's so obnoxious when the, it has to be acknowledged that the, the gender, you know, it, it, it implies that, male is the default and female is a variation and i really like that thor isn't dead naming axel anymore and there's some reforging of the sword and you know and gore says what kind of father would i be if i stopped and thor says I'm, I'm paraphrasing slightly. Love is all any of us want. And it's, it's just, I don't mind corniness, but I don't think it, it just feels out of place in a movie that at other times is so, yeah, doesn't take things seriously. I do really love, you know, they, they try to convince him, no, it's, you don't, you don't want to kill people. What you want is your daughter back. And he's like, I'm, I'm dying. She'll be alone. And they say, she won't be alone. And that is, yeah. And, yeah. You know, instead of wishing all the gods dead, he brings back his kid. I do, I'm torn because... I love a monstrous, sadistic, cruel villain, and I love a villain who gets a redemption. The two don't really mix. They, they, they just don't. And it's hard for me to say which of them I like, because it's, it's such a great villain redemption. 
but he makes such a mo like he's he is the monster that kids are are terrified is hiding under their beds you know so anyway i guess if i had to say i would probably have preferred that yeah i as much as i love the redemptive ending i i I don't think it just it doesn't feel earned. It feels like he was a monster for most of his screen time, and then he gets you know redemption. It's just yeah. But yeah, I I love that they're at the end. Valkyrie's teaching self defense, and you know we see Sif with only one arm training, and yeah, and Thor is now raising Gore's daughter and we find out you know that's why the movie's called love and thunder she's love he's thunder and yeah you know and and Korg and Dwayne with the big mustache and I think that might cover yeah so those are those are all the notes I had for the movie itself and I have some stuff for the mid and post credit scenes i want to very briefly i thought she was absolutely adorable and i didn't think it overstayed its welcome and it very much reminded me of jack jack attack when you know she's like shooting laser and and you know it's uh, brand new and you ruin it you know and it's you know taika waititi is a father himself so i'm guessing when he wrote and directed this kid to say, I don't like this. I've never eaten it. I, I, you know, I, I don't want it. I'm thinking that comes from experience, you know. Yeah. And just the, you know, he's like, put on the boots. I did. And she, you know, puts her feet up on the table where the food is. And she's wearing, like, these comfortable-looking, you know, it's it's for when she's just chilling out in her room. And he's like, you know what? Fine. Don't put on the boots. But I don't want to hear you complaining when your feet, you know, are sore. And she's like, fine, I'll go put them on. You know, it's this great, because, cause like, basically, neither of them can completely come out and express... I really can't, you know, they, they can't just look into each other's eyes as a Star-Lord suggested. Look into, you know, look into the eyes of the one you love and just, you know, be honest and just say, I love you, I care about you, I'm concerned about you, that's why I tell you, eat this food, put that, you know, put your boots on, all this stuff, you know, and she's, you know, she can't respond you know what i love you too i appreciate that i will put I, I will eat this food i will put the boots on you know but she ends up putting the boots on anyway and and this you know without either of them having to admit that they, you know but basically it's that they're still um it's like it's like with how he was with jane or mighty thor earlier you know, they can't quite admit to each other how they feel. So the mid credit scene tells us that Zeus is sending Hercules to kill Thor, which, you know, I think could, could be interesting. I, yeah, I don't especially have issues with it. I do hope that, like, I don't mind if Taika Waititi directs the, the next... You know, they did say Thor will return. I guess they technically they didn't say that there will be a Thor five since we're already this is already pushing. You know, no other original Avenger has four solo movies. No other, no one else in the MCU has four movies that are only about. You know, the the only other series in the MCU that has four movies is the Avengers series, which is by definition about team ups. And here we have four whole movies mainly about Thor and, you know, the people he comes into direct contact with and such. So, I I think there's, you know, I, I don't mind the idea of Taika Waititi directing more 
Thor. But if it's an entire movie focused on... If, if Taika Waititi directs another entire movie... I'm almost there, I swear. If Taika Waititi directs another entire movie in the MCU, then I hope that he gets a better balance. I've it, this this really struggled with this thing of like, well, is it ah, what's the word? Is it is it a you know? It basically it's constantly trying to make us laugh. And but but also raising these important issues and just I I think I think it needs to seriously cut down on the on the comedy and let the the heavy moments land. Actually, Ragnarok did have some heavy moments land when I really think about yeah the the big problem is near the end with you know oh the foundation's gone as Korg says. As, you know, he's talking about, oh, we can still rebuild. Oh, no, Foundation's gone. And, you know, Thor loses an eye, and Loki's like, I thought you had two eyes, or something like that, you know. And, uh, yeah, and, and Thor, right before that, says something, I don't, I, I don't remember exactly, but, yeah, it's supposed to be, oh, dramatic, and then, oh, joke. But when Hela talks about the, the, yeah, like, Hela's introduction isn't especially joke heavy. Like, you know, she says to Loki, you sound like him. But other than that, it's not an especially joke. You know, that that works. And then when she's telling Scourge, you know, we used to, you know, we conquered nine realms and then said, oh, that's enough. Why? You know, and and all this stuff. Yeah, there, there was some really good stuff there. But it just, yeah, it feels like the the... The movie is basically Ragnarok on steroids, and like one of the things, one of the reasons Ragnarok is so popular is because it was fresh. And this movie isn't really fresh; it's just you know more of more of the same. And yeah, the the uh, let's see, I I. I love Jojo Rabbit, but I think Taika Waititi might be better for smaller stuff. I don't know that his, like, when when he makes a big blockbuster movie, I, I don't think the he's, he's as good as bal at balancing the humor. You know, James Gunn also comes from indie and you know ma making weird movies and has a weird sense of humor and such but he's not afraid of stuff getting heavy in his movies you know that goes for the two guardians movies that goes for the suicide squad you know i i i got to say i'm more interested in more james gunn you know i know he's he's directing guardians 3 is he directing the um is it a Christmas special or is it a holiday special? I guess holiday special. Anyway, Guardians of the Galaxy ho holiday special. But yeah, I, I'm i not saying I don't want Taika Waititi to not... I, I, I don't... I'm not saying that I don't want him to direct more MCU. I, I just... I hope that he sits down and watches this movie with an, an editor and a co-writer... And they take notes of what just, yeah, it just, there's some stuff in this movie that really works. And then there's the stuff that just really doesn't. Anyway, uh, end credits scene. Jane is welcomed by Heimdall into Valhalla. Which, I th you know, that was set up earlier. If you die during battle, you go to Valhalla. You know, and, and Thor suggests maybe your arm is in Valhalla to, to Sif. You know, he's, he's like, no, I want to die on the battlefield so I can go to Valhalla. He's like, actually, you have to die in the battle. If you die after the battle, you're not going to go to Valhalla. You know, but yeah, Jane died fighting, you know. So, yeah, 
that, that's a great and I like that the end you know the ending says Thor will return it doesn't say which Thor if it's Thor Odinson or Almighty Thor so yeah and let's see what brings us to hmm I guess that's a that's a that's a thing now okay no I can I can work with this okay here we go yes so that brings us to the final section let's see the, there we go and there notes taken before watching so let's see now yeah so the first three movies have supporting characters risking their lives to save civilians in the first two it's even characters who have no superpowers at all eric selvig jane and Darcy. I was wondering if this movie would continue that trend. I mean, I don't think you can quite call, you know, because she has superpowers now and she's the. She's not really risking her life, but, you know, she is working to protect people. Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so Gore kills gods because he hates them after they didn't answer his prayers and protect his family. So he's basically an exaggerated version of what conservatives think angry or to them all atheists are like since. Let's see. Yeah, and in the comic, he lost his wife and children. Uh, you know, they were not being protected by God. Another way to look at Gore is, would be that he is Job, if he had any self-respect. I mean, compared to all the righteous killing all over the Bible, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, I, I think Natalie Portman looks incredibly badass as Almighty Thor. I don't... Has she been in an action movie since... Like, I think the last time I saw her in, let's see. So yeah, the the uh, let's see, V for Vendetta is an act. Uh, it's a drama with a couple of action scenes. I she, yeah, she doesn't really get to do any serious action in that one. She does act. She does. I think she does great at action in the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, I don't know. She might have done something, you know, in between the Star Wars prequels and this, but I don't think I really know of it then. Oh, I guess maybe in Annihilation, for example, but it that's more of a horror movie than an action movie. Anyway, but yeah, she, she can really kick ass. I was wondering if this movie would feature the... Ah, uh, what's the word? If this movie... If this movie would feature the death of one or more Thors. And... You know, yeah. It'd be very cool and gutsy. You know, Ragnarok has some of that in destroying Asgard and Thor kind of losing in the climax. Yeah, you know, Mighty Thor did die, but Thor Odinson is still alive and thundering. I I kind of like Zeus's jab at, oh, you're the god of thunder. Isn't thunder just the sound that comes with lightning? You know, it's just... Because it is, like, you know, the... Yeah. And... Yeah, so let's... 
yeah, I, I was worried that Taika Waititi was going to ruin the, you know, the weight of the, the breast cancer. Ah, what's the word? Yeah, with, with some dumb joke right after. But, yeah, I... I was also, I was very surprised by how many times they brought it up. This is a good surprise, not bad surprise. And, yeah, it's it's cool to see Natalie with muscles. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, in the review I talk about, you know, she's more adorable in this than the others, but I didn't go into how, you know, it's this thing of, she's a superhero who never expected to be one, so she has to try to imitate what she's heard and seen other superheroes do, you know, this this thing of, you know, she keeps trying to come up with catchphrases and, and such, and yeah, and the... Ah, uh, what was the, there was another thing of, let's see, right, in, in the trailers, we, you know, even, even, yeah, even in the trailers, we see he's actually really supportive of her, like, you know, she, she talks about, yeah, you know, he's, he, he doesn't act like this, you know, toxic, like, he, he doesn't have a problem with her being a superhero, you know, and he tries to be supportive, like, there's, you know, yeah, she kind of, she needs some, it's, it's like with the two Hawkeyes, you know, yeah, she, she, she has the tools, but she doesn't have a lot of experience yet, you know, with the, with the two Hawkeyes, the, um, Kate Bishop also had a lot of skills already, I I don't think any character in the movie actually points it directly out, but at least in Mighty Thor form, Jane is taller than she used to be. You know, they, they put her on this thing that she could stand on and walk on. Does that mean that if Thor never held Mjolnir, he would be a lot shorter? That's, that's an, there's an image. And, yeah, some people don't like that before there was one Thor, now there's more. Thor Odinson is the person, Thor is the title, Mighty Thor is Jane. If Valkyrie can be both a name and a type, so can Thor. Now, I've always enjoyed Himbo Thor. Hemsworth just smiling, being big, friendly doofus who doesn't understand everything going on around him. You know, that's been a part of Thor since the first film, and I think it... It's always been funny. I don't like him standing around telling stories, bickering with allies and enemies like in Ragnarok. Honestly, this one was a little bit better. Like, I, I'm i not telling anyone they're wrong for liking Ragnarok. But when he stands, like, you know, the, the, like, it, it's like, you know, uh, he's, it's Thor Odinson, Valkyrie, and Bruce Banner, and they're like talking about, oh, you know, I don't see Loki's like trying to kill us, you know, and it feels like Chris Hemsworth, I don't know, maybe it was written that way, but it, you know, it just feels so desperate. It's like Chris Hemsworth has to top the other ones, you know, so he, he starts out by saying, he tried to kill me too, many times, uh, once when we were kids. He, uh, he transformed himself into a snake because he knows I love snakes. So I went to pick up the snake, admire it, turned himself back to himself, said, ah, this is stabbed me, we were eight at the time. And it's like, none of that was funny to me. It was just a lot of words to, like, you already said he tried to kill you. We don't, we don't need examples. And certainly we don't, like, I, I think the idea is supposed to be that with every line, like, it keeps subverting our expectations, like when he says... He transformed into a snake. We think that he snuck up on him, but no, no, he went and picked up the snake. 
oh, so he attacked us as snakes, so he used his fangs or, like, tried to strangle him. No, no, he turned back into himself. It's just, none of this is, it's, it's not funny. It's not a funny joke. And when he's just talking about, you know, oh, we're the, uh, we're the Revengers, because, uh, you want revenge, and I want revenge, you want revenge, oh, I'm undecided, it's just, st stop talking, you're not funny, you're, you're, just, you're just cringe, you're just painful to listen to, you know, and, yeah, I just, I, I've never been, I've never liked when he just stands around and jokes and such, I get why the actor wants to do that, I just, I, I don't feel like it makes sense for the character, and it especially bothered me in Ragnarok. Yeah, honestly, here, it was a lot better. I, I I can understand why some people might say that it's bad here with the, with, you know, when he's, you know, the, the romantic comedy stuff with Jane, and I can completely, I completely understand that, but I don't know, I mean, part of it is that the, the, there's, there's such chemistry and it's just, it's, that's the kind of thing people, you know, when someone, when, when two, two people split up and then they have to spend some time together, they're going to talk about, well, you were the one who broke up, but you forced me to break up, you know, all of this stuff. It, it's right under the surface, but, you know, them standing around saying, you know, talking about, ah, we're the Revengers, who wants revenge? And... You know, he, he, ah, it's me, and stabbed me, and we were eight. You know, it's just, I hate to, I don't, I'm not saying it's bad because nobody talks like that in real life. This is all fiction. With, you know, in real life, people don't fly and, and you know, throw lightning bolts and, and all this stuff. But it just feels awkward. There's no flow to it. It's just, it, it just kills the momentum dead right in the spot just a and you just you just want them to shut up and move on and do something instead of just standing around cracking jokes when the universe is at stake and these are characters that are supposed i get it for valkyrie especially in ragnarok she wasn't really but thor is supposed to care about protecting the universe and instead he'll just stand around and joke or bicker with hulk and just yeah now let's see yeah so there is no multiverse in this movie and i there was definitely not room for it do i think the movie should have been about multiverse i think it worked fine without let's see last one Doctor Strange 2, also multiverse heavy. And before that... Was Spider-Man? Let's... Was Spider-Man this year or last year? I can't quite recall. I... Why do I feel like there was some... Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm real quick going to look it up. I swear I will not just spend forever on this, but I just really quickly going to look up. Okay, so we have phase four and movies. Here we go. No, those are, yeah. Yeah, so two movies in a row with multiverse, and then one movie with no multiverse, I think, was a good goal. And I could imagine Black Panther Wakanda Forever might also not have multiverse. And then we have the Quantum Realm in Ant-Man 3, which might be, which might, you know, they might get into some... Ah, what's the word? There might be some multiverse-ish stuff there. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it needs to be every single one. And Doctor Strange 2 had a lot of multiverse stuff. So, yeah. I realize it wasn't enough. You know, some people thought it wasn't enough. But, you know. And I, I, I think we'll get more. 
Now, let's see. So, so yeah, in Thor 2, Jane was helpful because of her science expertise. Now she has superpowers to different, not conflicting, ideas of female empowerment. So depending on which you want, there's a Thor movie that gives you that. And as I already talked about in this, she does still apply her science knowledge to help. And that is it for this video. So... Please go to the comment section. Let me know which of the gods were you most disappointed that we didn't get to see very much of in this. Do you think that the... Do you have high hopes for Hercules fighting Thor? What yeah which do you think is the best mcu movie if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell there should be a link to my main channel page one two or more links to stuff like relevant playlists a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now i put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about my spoiler filled thoughts on the most recent of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is Ms. Marvel. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my videos next week. I hope you enjoyed watching. As I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.